This is a tale of two stands. Yay! Sorry, I just had to get in the Mabel mood. This is, it really feels like it's been a while. Oh my god! You know, I was just saying too, like, Next Sweater Watch 2015, by the way, latest update. It's a key. The same it was as it was last yeah. time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, I feel bad because I'm somebody, so somebody I wanted made, a different sweater. I waited all this time and I don't get a different sweater? It was the same day. <laughs> Fuck that! Uh, uh, there's two things, by the way. Someone got me a dipper hat, I was gonna wear that, and then someone also got you around, like, Christmas time, that Mabel, uh... I'm gonna do, yeah, sweats. I'm gonna do something so, with uh, that, but not until I, we get a different sweater. No, literally, like, we were gonna do it this morning, and then, like, other stuff came up, and it's like, crap, well, we'll just have to fit it in wherever. Well, you went so. to Finland and got complained. Yeah, <laughs> and, well, I was gonna say, yeah, I've been sick as well, so it might be a while before you see anything on Ant-Man, sorry. <laughs> uh, just been busy with that. I don't, I don't think we've got any other vlogs this week either, because yeah, we're so, up, so, I'm sorry, we're just catching up, you know, doing Nostalgia Critic, uh, new Pop Quiz Hot Shots are coming out, and stuff like that, so, uh, busy with that. Well, also we're yeah, whatever. So, Gravity oh, Falls. Gee. Gravity, Gravity Falls. Falls, a tale two stands. Uh, it's know. a sham! It's, just a, it's a rip off! <laughs> My favorite is, what a racket! <laughs> My favorite, uh, good thing I sold them stand quality, uh, what was it, rakes and racks? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, the, this one had so much exposition, but so much comedy at the same time, and it's so many answers that we've been waiting for and wanting well, to I see. I was like telling you as we were watching it, I was like, I feel like I got, like, ten seasons worth of X-Files in one episode, and there's still more mystery. Yeah. Or, like, why couldn't other shows have done this? Like, or, I, or, or, you or know, Lost, Lost, or I've yeah. sat through all these shows, and it was so underwhelming in the end, because, like, we didn't really answer anything. Like, in, the in answer one, was actually another question. No, these are actual answers. There's still other questions that you have before, yeah. but no new questions are raised, and that feels satisfying. It doesn't this feel was like a gimmick. Very satisfying. I, the other shows should take notes. You know, because it also had the emotional connection. The backstory with the two stands is actually a really good backstory. Uh, <laughs> I gotta say, my only pet peeve about the flashback is, considering Dipper's voice, I really was, like, gunning for, like, young Stan to still have the kind of Stan voice. Just a little See, lighter. I like, I, I like almost wanted that. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Like, it still doesn't explain Dipper, though. Oh, so that kid just got extra testosterone or something? What? <laughs> <laughs> just in his voice, I guess. Because he's but, very weak. I don't know. I almost, I, it was when they were talking the little boy voices, I was just like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> well, because they still have, like, the big nose really, and the big chin and yeah. stuff like that. You have to recognize them. Uh, a lot of good little um, uh, background stuff in here. Did you notice in the opening on the uh, boards when they were going to sneak into that little uh, cave, there was a little thing that said Blendon was here? Yeah. Uh, I saw that. that. There was... I just... <laughs> Just the randomness of their lines. It's like, or maybe Mesoamerican gold. <laughs> it's just like, what? That just stuck out. It's like, what? Uh, you um, know, Stan usually says, you know, what was it, Great Belgian Waffles or something like that. It turns out he grew up next to a place called Great Belgian Waffles. Yeah. Um, I tried, the, the one part that, uh, for a second, threw me off. I'm like, oh my god, a new part of the puzzle. And then I realized when, uh, when Stan Lee, I guess... Uh, is leaving... Stan Lee was in this? <laughs> Excelsior! <laughs> um, but, but you see the mother come out with a baby, I'm like, Oh my god, they had their sibling, who is that? Oh yeah, different Mabel's parent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of forgot about that. We never see them, so I totally well forgot. Well done. I know, I took well a minute. Um, the code at the end, by the way, I forget exactly what it said, was pretty much that the father didn't know he was going to have twins, so he just named them both Stan to make it easy, and then somewhere down the right line, just called Stanford and Stan Lee to tell them apart. Uh, nothing huge, no, not a big one. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the other thing I'll kind of point out is, uh, this is my little conspiracy theory, at the end when he has the jump drive with all, like, the government stuff on it, and he gives it to the goat, I think that goat is a character. Like, I think that's gonna turn out to be a character that's up to something. He's a they, government you know, spy! I don't know, but they always, the goat always has those weird eyes, it's never explained, and now it has all this information that they think just threw away. That's my theory, it, I could be totally wrong, but that's just my little theory. Um, but, yeah, the, the big thing I liked about the backstory in this is when, you know, they're talking about they're gonna go on this treasure hunt, and, uh, but now Stanford is accepting this college if this science program goes over well, and, you know, Stan Lee is obviously very angry, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, he's gonna sabotage the project, and I really fucking hate this, but he doesn't do it on purpose. If anything, he tries to set it right, 
but still kind of his fault because he didn't tell him and he still sort of messed it up, so I like that it's both... It's a perpetual motion machine. It has one job to not stop. <laughs> um, and I, But I like the fact that it would have been so easy just to have him like get jealous and do something, but the fact that it was an accident both adds to it was his fault, but there's still a tragedy to it as well. Uh, and, like and it's, the, it's a, uh, so his anger is still kind of justified. The brother's anger when he comes back. I liked the epic Obi Wan Anakin fight near uh, right before he got sucked into the gate, and he's like, "You ruined my life. You did that yourself." <laughs> this is, I just kept it flashing back to like Star Wars. <laughs> See, to me, I got much more. Even the way they were fighting, you know, at the point where he says, "You know, hey, give you know, give it back." It's oh no, like, they were again, They're like little yeah. kids. Yeah, and they're fighting over. Mom the always liked your best. Yeah, the the. Tattoo on the back is, is actually a burn mark. We got that now. Um, um, yeah, so many of the little questions answered. While still, we don't know what exactly is on the other side of the gate. We just know that Stan... For, wait, what is it now? Stan Lee and Stan Ferd. Yeah, but Stan... I, so which is which? Says Stan Ferd is the one that was away. Stan Lee is the one who, you know, stayed behind. And stole the Stan, okay. Yeah. Um, so, we know that Grunkle Stan's twin got sucked into it, and Grunkle Stan spent all this time trying to get him back, and he's not very grateful. Um, but, but again, it's, even though I'm not saying it's justified, it's understandable, because you see, you know, what happened, and yeah. the, the things oh, that no, 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 I mean, totally there's is. two times he just totally altered his life, mostly for the worse. I was joking since it was J.K. Simmons, I was like, on the other side of the gate, he's like, and that's when I decided to become an airbender in this alternate universe. That'd be the best, <laughs> best crossover ever. But uh, comes back with Cora. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think what else. There's just so much shit that happened. Yeah, the um. Ah, oh, crap! I had I said the son of a bitch. Yeah, I'm trying to like go through my head. Oh, like, all this stuff. I will say this. So, uh, Stanford, who came back from the game? Stanford. Yeah. Yeah, Stanford. So Stanford says. And that's when I decided to write the journals. I literally went, ah! And then Doug's like, shh! And then one second later, Dipper goes, ah! That's what I was gonna say. I love how this, both, both this and Avatar, we were just bringing up, uh, have the same thing in common that they both really know their fans very well and they know yeah. the reaction so that they know when you're going to squee. And they also know what you've been writing fan fiction yeah. about conspiracies because when, uh, uh, Seuss comes up and he's like, you know, well, this better match my fan fiction. It's, I mean, that's that's hilarious and that's inc that's funny in the show, but it's also funny. Wendy, like, you know, block out the next fourteen hours. I've got something amazing to tell you. <laughs> it's three a.m. Yeah, so now it begins Act Two. <laughs> um, it, and you must be some sort of large gopher. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I get that a lot. Is it? Weird to say, I'm actually surprisingly missing Wendy. <laughs> Which I am you too. popped up at the end. I, I, was like, I am, I am too. We always kind of said she's just sort of the bland girl character. Well, Wendy but... grew on me, though. Yeah, and she kinda... initially, I didn't feel she had a whole lot of character, but as the story progressed, I think I... Part, of it, part of it was the romance too. I think. Yeah, I you know. know. Uh, yeah. When they added more of a character to her, she, she got a little more interesting. Uh, and yeah, when they started to keep her out, I'm like, yeah, but you're kind of missing her. I wouldn't mind seeing her again. Um, but. Uh, and, of course, they're building up something at the end with, like, where Dipper and Mabel are gonna, like, get into some big fight, or they're gonna, you know, sort of fall apart or something. I mean, more than they have in the past. Foreshadowing. I was gonna say, I, I don't want to see that. I mean, it's like, okay, I know drama and everything, but well, I don't we already see we, that. We already started it when Dipper uh, was telling Mabel to do one thing, and she's like, no, I'm sorry, I trust, you know, Grunkle Stan. Oh, we've seen it a couple episodes, you know, the, the mistrust and everything. Yeah, so it's, but it's, it's already building. Well, but that's why it's so interesting that now they're building up, like, something even bigger is happening, because it's like, they have done this. Uh, so, you know, and, and they've gotten, you know, pretty close to really, you know, sort of hurting their, their relationship, so now it's going to be, like, something even bigger than that. And it is funny, like, because no. this is the first non-kid-centric episode in a long time. Yeah, I feel like this, I'm of... like, really Dipper and Mabel, th they probably had a dozen lines maybe all together throughout this whole show, mm -hmm. like this episode. Like, yeah, most of the jokes really are adult was, jokes. Too. Yeah, and it's all about, um, the two grunkles, I guess. <laughs> Dipper <laughs> has two grunkles. I mean, yeah. The two stands. Um, so yeah, it was all about the two stands, and really, yeah, like, I was like, very little out of Dipper or Mabel. Like, I can't even remember many of their lines, except for the, ah! 
but yeah, you know. But and I like that. Ask him. I really did that. I'm not <laughs> joking. Yeah, no. I actually went. Hold on. <laughs> no, because I can see you getting ready to squee. I'm like, he's gonna do it at the same time that Dipper does, uh, <laughs> which is very funny. Um, but yeah, I, I I kind of agree that this was mostly focused on, even though it's about. The, you know, their childhoods and growing up and stuff, you're right, it was mostly focused on them as adults and what they had to go through and the By the way, stuff, but it still had the comedy, too. As an aside, we have crazy Midwestern weather going on, so we just had, like, thunderstorm, and now the sun just came out, so... Yeah, I'm gonna... That, that exposure That's why you're, you're probably gonna nuts. wonder, like, you know what it is? It's like, God is shining down on us. He is happy with what gravity falls as There well. you go, there you go. But, yeah, that's why it just went, like... Don't you watching. know what gravity falls is? It's a gateway to God. <laughs> You want to talk to God? Let's go. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, actually, this is the first time, too, I believe, that Gravity Falls was used not as the name of a location, but as an explanation of what will happen when Grunkit comes out after wasting his time working on personal computers in his garage. Uh, when he comes yeah, back... Yeah, I love the, the little Bill Gates, Steve Jobs nod there. Yeah. Like, he was building computers in his garage in Palo Alto. Yeah, wasting his time, yeah. Uh, when he comes back, he says, you know, uh, something along the lines of, you know, uh, when when the gravity falls, all hell will break loose and stuff like that. I mean, so it's it's actually used as a term, not as the name of a location, which I thought was very interesting. Well, not, the other interesting thing is, as much as he wants to blame Grunkle Stan for all the problems, it, they both leave this wake of destroyed human lives. Yeah. <laughs> like, he totally ruins uh, McGucket's life. You know, Grunkle Stan takes out the poor woman's eye. Like, it's just all of the explanations. Like, these two are like a walking disaster. Well, and even after all these years, he, he brings him back and, you know, he thinks he's going to go on and find, like, the treasure hunt or just whatever, you know, something. And he's like, take this and get out of here and never see me again. Just take it away so I can't find it. And they both feed into each other, which I think is very important. Um, you know, I, I think sort of Stanford's inability to forgive and Stan Lee... You know, constantly sort okay, of messing just say things Stanley. Up you keep saying Stan Lee, and I keep Stanley. I keep thinking of like Marvel or something. No, you say Stan Lee. They're both Stanley. Yeah, there you said it right, Stanley. Stanley. See, and Stan Lee. That's how you keep saying it. No, how? That's what you sound like. How does somebody go Stan Lee? That's what you. That's what you did. That's like the French way, Stan Lee. He did it a number of times. I swear. I would rewind it. And then when you tell me if I said Stan Lee or Stan Lee, you keep putting emphasis on Lee. No, no, the fucking When you did it there, you said it French. Lee. We're talking about how brothers cannot forgive each other for stupid little things, and this is in no way proving my point. You're an idiot. Um. What was the other thing? Oh, I like J.K. Simmons in this role. I think the way they dressed him and the way he's doing the voice, which is kind of his normal J.K. Simmons voice, but it sounds like Robert Stack. Like it's got an unsolved mystery thing going on. You're still just gonna sit here and... Stan Lee! Stan Lee! You did it, I swear to God. Stan Lee! Je la député. Je la député! Um... Anyway, see if I said it French. I think we uh, just insulted an entire nation. Now, every, everyone in the comments is going to be Stan Lee, Stan Lee, Stan Lee, Stan Lee. We're, we're just going to get a bunch of French replies. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's all going to be swearing aimed at uh, us. Actually, Stan Lee said less Stan Lee. I'm going to have to keep hitting C translation. And just like, <laughs> Fuck you, Walker Brother. <laughs> no, it's just Stan Lee translates Stan Lee. <laughs> um, so, uh, no, th this was a really good episode. I like J.K. Simmons, and I like. You know, it's so funny because when we think of J.K. Simmons, we kind of think of one role. We think of Spider-Man, the guy behind the desk. The guy who talks really fast and is really, you know, the strong and determined and the guy in charge. And uh, Honestly, when it comes to his voice work, though. He's actually very versatile, yeah. yeah. We uh, saw, well, he, we got Korra, we got this. He's, isn't he also the yellow m, &M? Yeah, he's the yellow M&M. Yeah. The peanut M&M. &M. Um, um, so, yeah, it's funny. Like, I associated him visually with Jonah Jameson from Spider-Man, but... Even then, not so much anymore. Now I associate him with the State Farm guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I still associate farmers. Was it? Yeah. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Um, but what was I going to say? I think it's one of those things where... Yeah, because when I heard he was going to play the role, I'm like, well, okay, he's a good actor. I just hope it's not like, you know, just, you know, give me pictures of Spider-Man, <laughs> you know, but... It's not. It was, again, sort of this new character. I get I, I, I get unsolved mysteries, particularly with the trench coat and everything, and, and the way he talks, it's got this sort of sing-song, I don't know, something going on in his voice. Mm. I, but there's also a little bit of a panic in there, too. Unsolved mystery. 
Um, yeah, but there's a little bit of the panic in there, too. Yeah, I mean, you could like, tell. They, they sound enough alike that you could see them as brothers. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, I'm trying... Anything else? You think you got problems? I got a mullet! <laughs> I got a mullet! I've been in prison in three different countries! I had to chew my out of a trunk! A car trunk? A lot of great Grunkle Stan lines in this one. Yeah. Um, but, uh, pretty much almost as good as, What did I do to warrant this much arrested? <laughs> It's uh no, it's a good episode. It has good comedy, good exposition. But it was I thought it was worth the wait. Um, I d can we get a normal schedule though, please? What yeah, is I don't know if it's. Um, this episode's gonna what? run like four weeks from now, and then we're gonna have another two week hiatus. And it's gonna be back five weeks later, and then uh, in between we'll run episodes of SpongeBob. But that's not even on your network. Well, we decided it is now, and <laughs> the SpongeBob Empire is growing. Um, no, I honestly, I'll wait. It's oh wait! I think the, the next. I don't. I think the next one's like August or something. Now there's like another okay. hiatus. I right? mean, it's one of those things where it's like you know. I, oh, I, I hate it because I want it, but I I love it because they're always so good at just. I don't mind waiting, but I would rather wait to see a block, uh -huh. not one episode. That's what's bugging me. It's like. But, it's, but again, it's this mishmash. Just, just give me two, two fair, blocks, and I'll to, be good. To be fair, if. There's an episode to wait for. This this was a good episode to wait for. I'm, um, I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm just like, why couldn't you then just run it in August? Um, I don't know. They, Did we need the snack? Is that like <laughs> something to do. tie this I, I, over? I to, uh, but, um, but I'm definitely full from it. So it was a uh, it was a welcome was snack, uh, nevertheless. So um, yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, like I said, more. Uh, you know, the bum review and sibling rivalry of Ant-Man will probably be delayed. Sorry. We'll still have the new uh, Pop Quiz Hot Shot coming out, though. And the, and the Nostalgia Grave will be a full review next time. Uh, so, yeah. And, and the Steven Universe. We'll get back to those. So, yeah. Sorry. Just Finland got sick. As you can hear, I'm a lot better, though, and I'm just catching up. So, um, yeah. Lots more stuff is on the way. And uh, hopefully more uh, Gravity Falls will be at us soon, too. So, until then. Still. Good night, stupid. Good night. Then